Hey, what's going on? This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the CreditRepairShop.com. And in today's video, we're going to talk about defending yourself against debt collection lawsuits. Uh, yesterday, I would say over the last week, probably 40 to 50 people contacted our company where they had reached out to collection lawyers in their uh, or lawyers in their area for help uh, fighting against debt collectors. And not to say that there's no lawyers in your area that will want to help you with this. It's just that I could tell you that it's not something that they feel is a profitable business for them. That's the reason why. And the reason why on that is because if you're being sued for money by another debt collector, and they're going to have to uh, charge you billable hours to defend you against another, uh, to, to defend you against that debt collector, and they end up taking uh, you to court and following through with everything, you're going to be in a worse situation than you were when just when you were just dealing with the one collector, because now you're going to have a, a, an attorney that defended you coming after you for money. They're going to want to get paid and then they're going to want a retainer anyways to just start off and then you're going to have the debt collector themselves still aggressively coming after you and you could take my word on this is something that happened to me years ago before i started uh, uh the credit repair shop when i had had a situation and when i because the dollar amount was so high i decided to uh hire an attorney to work with me on it, but I ended up doing all of the work on it. And that attorney, even though I had made the settlement uh, decisions on it, got a 15% residual on the amount that was settled for. So I ended up paying uh, the 40, $43,000, and then I had to pay on top of it another uh, percentage for the settlement, which was, I think, it ended up being like another three thousand dollars. So I was like, "This is just uh, uh, you know crazy." And then when when I started the credit repair shop, I was like, uh, "People were coming to me and they were like, 'I'm getting sued. I'm getting sued. What can I do? How do I fight against this?'" And I was like, "I know exactly what happened with me. I know what uh, happened with clients that I've helped with with business clients that I helped at that time." And uh, I'm about to share with you what you need to do. I made a lot of videos on this, but um, I mean, I'm serious. My lead volume of leads that come in because of debt collector lawsuits and dealing with debt collectors is actually higher than what I have with credit repair. And you might be saying, well, what is the difference? You know, aren't people who have debt collectors coming, coming after them also credit repair clients? This is the major difference. The major difference is that these individuals are being sued. The laws have been changed in, in all 50 states. Uh, it seems like the laws have been changed, except for, I would say, New Jersey, New York, California. You you, you know, they, they've kind of been taking care of their uh, uh, citizens when uh, a lot, what, allowing the debt collectors not to go overboard. But in other states, they are allowing debt collectors to just go crazy, to run rampant. I mean, just going into people's accounts, doing all types of stuff. So I put up on my blog, on my website, thecreditrepairshop.com, how to defend yourself against debt buyers, because it all starts with the debt buyers. They're buying the debt, and then they're either going to go after people for the debt, or they're going to sell it to smaller debt collectors, or they're going to assign it to smaller debt collectors or they're going to get it over to a lawyer to collect it. So first, it, you know, everybody knows this, but just in case you're new to the channel and um, you're, you know, fell into a situation where you have a debt collector coming after you, I'm going to briefly talk about what these debt buyers do. These are companies who purchase charged off and written off debt. That's the debt. Say you had a credit card debt from a, a previous credit card company wasn't able to pay it, it goes into what's called a, a charged off status. 
This is where they have to take it off of the books and consider it an account that's not performing. They have to legally do this. Even in most cases, even when it hits that point, you cannot even really call the company and say, I want to pay the debt because it goes through this like gray area where they're going to say, hey, are we going to sell it? Or are we going to just batch this up and put it in a portfolio and, and sell it off to a debt collector, to a debt portfolio buyer, debt, debt buyer? And so, because a lot of people, they get upset and they're like, hey, you know, I know I owe this debt to you. Why can't you do it? And they'll say things like, we don't have it here anymore. And it, it makes a lot of confusion because you're like, if you don't have it here anymore, why is it on my credit reports like this? And then another company, the debt buyer, ends up sending you a letter. It's called a 30-day dunning letter. They're required to do this by law. Uh, they buy the debt, which they can buy for pennies on a dollar. And I gave an example. They might buy $1,000 credit card debt for $10, depending on how old the debt is. I've seen it go for like two or three cents, just depending on how old the debt is. But if it's a newer debt, they're going to still get it for pennies on the dollar. They're just going to pay a little bit more. Um, so what they're going to be required to do, they're going to send you with this letter and you have 30 days to respond. If you don't respond to that letter in that 30 day period, you're actually allowing them to do a lot of things to you and this is where people end up uh, coming to my company. Number one, if you don't respond to that letter, it allows them to place that information on your credit reports. They want to put that information on your credit reports because they want to have some way of harming you and putting pressure on you to pay that debt. So if you don't respond to that debt, to that letter in that 30 day period, and when I say respond, that's disputing, making them prove everything, all of that stuff. If you do that at the beginning, a lot of these debt collectors will just say, hey, take this one off of our list. We're not going to try to go after this person. And I'm going to give you a solution on what you could do if you have uh, early uh, letters coming in from a debt collector. Uh, so you want to respond to that letter. So if you don't respond to it, they're going to put it on your credit reports, and then that's going to take them into the next step, into the next phase of what they're going to do. Depending on how much the debt is, I've usually seen where there's a minimum that they're going to uh, choose to go to this next step, which is to uh, file a lawsuit. Usually $800 and up is, seems to be what I'm seeing right now. So if you owe $800 or more to a debt collector, then you, you may end up having them try to sue you and, and take you to court. Now, when they choose to do this, they do it in various ways. Because of COVID, uh, with the virtual, it has actually allowed them to do more lawsuits. Like there's hundreds of thousands of lawsuits going on every single day in the United States of America due to what, the, what COVID allowed the debt collectors to be able to do. Because no one was going into the courthouse, everything was virtual. These debt collectors are smart. They were like, hey, if it's virtual, we don't have to pay a, a, a collection attorney in that area. All we have to do is get licensed as a debt collector in that state. And then we can uh, do a virtual uh, uh, hearing with the, with the uh, uh, court. And because most people don't show up to those hearings or most people don't know what to say in those hearings, which I'm going to go into the, the things that you need to be uh, saying and that you need to respond to, they win by default. It was showing that in some states, up to 75 to 80 percent of the lawsuits that debt collectors bring in in default judgments. That's where no one shows up. And another percentage was where people showed up, but they had no defense. They didn't challenge anything. They just said, well, I didn't do business with that the debt collector. And that was it. That's not going to work in court. So. If they decide to take you to court, these are the things that you want to be aware of that you want to, to be able to challenge. So, uh, and I'm going to put the link to this on my blog so you can go to it. So the first thing, and, and there's always, uh, this is just like the top of the line, top of mind things that you should challenge when being sued by a debt collector. Uh, but if, you know, there's, it's always different because they always, Give, depending on which debt collector, depending on who prepared it, they're always going to probably throw in a little bit more stuff that you're going to have to uh, maybe uh, 
answer to. So what you're going to do is you're going to get a summons from your court. They're going to have to serve it to you. In some states, they must have your signature and prove that they service it to you. In some states, they're just allowing proof of service. That's where they sent someone to your home, they gave it to someone, or they attempted to serve it. That's what they, you know, that's that's just what they're allowing them to do right now. So now the first things that you want to check into to make sure uh, when you're being sued by debt collector on that summons, you're going to want to respond. You have to respond to each of the points. It's going to be like one, two, three, four, five. It might be things like you live at this address. We are suing you in the in the proper jurisdiction like you live in that county. Things like that. You have to respond to that. Yes, yes, or no, or not enough information to admit or deny. That's what you would do on those responses. And then wherever it talked about money, this is the way that I do it. Wherever they talk about money, even though you're going to put it in your affirmative defense, wherever they talk about money that you owe, accounts, this and that, all that stuff, is where you do want to give a, a response on that line. You want to respond to their allegation that you owe this amount of money, that you owe them that money, all of that. And these are the things that you're going to be putting in that on those lines and then also in your affirmative defense. So the first thing is you want to make them uh, check the contract that they are claiming that allows them to even come after you for the debt. You've never done any business with them. This is something that most people always do, but they, they leave it right here. You want them to prove, hey, how did you get my information? Show me the contract that I have with you, all of that stuff. They most likely will not be able to get anything like that. They're going to just supply all of the other information. And this is how you break apart the stuff that they're going to send you to prove the contract with them because they don't have a direct signature saying, hey, okay, because I didn't pay you, I owe uh, anyone that you sell it to. They're not going to have anything like that. So you want to, when they, they're going to send, you know, back a whole bunch of stuff, or uh, if you're already in the summons uh, phase, they're going to usually state it inside of there. So you're going to want to request in your uh, response, the original creditor, all the documents pertaining to the debt, balances, charges, interest rates, charges, disclosures, your signatures for all of the charges that they claim. Usually what they'll do is they'll just give one bank statement. They'll say, hey, you owe this amount of money and this is the, this is the amount. No, that's not good enough. You want all of the statements. If you own this debt and you're, quote unquote, the new creditor, debt collector, get all of that information. Let me see it for my review. Uh, and you'll notice that on the responses that they'll have on the uh, summons uh, complaint, they'll usually state that there was no dispute of the information. Well, there was no disputed information to you. Uh, I had no reason to dispute any information to you. I had no contract with you. You see how you, you kind of flip that word over to them and then they have to come back and say, well, okay, we'll just get you those documents because you always have a right to dispute. That's what they don't want you to know. Even when you go to court, you still have a right to dispute at that time. and But you can't just dispute it like it's not mine. You want to dispute on records. You're doing what's called a records request to be able to dispute everything that they're using to come up to the claimed amount. See, they're coming to you with an amount and you're saying, okay, I do have a dispute and I want to look at my records so I can recall what uh, which charges that I want that I did dispute. The next thing is uh, you want to make sure that nothing, uh, make sure that nothing was transferred by the original cre uh, creditor that pertaining to your account was inaccurate. This is a, another thing. This is a biggie. Uh, if if you've ever uh, got, uh, you know, where they'll show you where they purchased the debt and it'll have a signature from a representative of, uh, let's just say, a credit card company. And they'll have their signature on there and they're saying, hey, you know, uh, we sold this portfolio, our business records, blah, 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 all that stuff they're going to put in there. But there's one thing that they never put in there. They never put in there that they say that that portfolio is 100% accurate. And then another thing that you probably didn't even think about unless you 
read it completely, is that they say that the debt buyer assumes all responsibilities for any errors, any uh any harm that comes to the individuals that's in the portfolio from errors that we made, like they assume everything. So it's it, it's like they and they can't go back and get any other information. They can't say, well, Steve said that, uh, you know, this is something that he had a problem with and we need to go back and get some more. They say, no, we gave you everything. Those that that file name that's on that portfolio that you purchased. That has everything. You go dive in there, and if it, it's not there, then you uh, you're you're out of luck. Uh, the next thing, request all documents pertaining to the debt. You'll want information about from the entire portfolio. They cannot change any of the documents. They can only redact parts of it. Uh, they must show your complete name, complete account number, and balances. Uh, when I did my first, uh, this is way back in the 90s, when I had a debt collector coming after me for a credit card debt that I had when I was 18 years old in the military, they claimed that the account ballooned up to $4,500. I knew at that time, in, in the military, I was only making like 600 and some dollars a month. I never had a credit card that allowed me that amount. So I accidentally said the right thing when I showed up to court. I said, I don't even know nothing about this debt. And they had to get me the uh, proof of the debt. And that, and that was the, lo the lower lawyer that came to, to the court next, the owner of the law firm. And it was uh, uh, Roush. You probably heard of them, Roush and Stern. Well, attorney Roush came to court against me. I'm back then in my 20s and uh, brought a stack. Because I think that they were kind of new to the business too. So he brought a whole stack because this is what's what's required. And it had all of the accounts on there and then it had them all redacted. It was like all these black lines and it got to my name on there. And I had noticed that it was something like, uh, you know, I didn't, I'll be honest, I didn't pay attention to the amount because I was more focused on the overall amount of $4,500 because I knew I didn't spend $4,500 back then I did I just didn't and uh so I was focused on that and then when they you know when everything was said and done they got me all of the proof the stacks I reviewed them uh I pushed to do a settlement directly with that attorney and it was for five hundred dollars and the judge was like man you 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 uh you, you know you're lucky this and that but really what it was was I got taken advantage of let me tell you how I got taken advantage of and I have this inside of uh, on, on one of the lines here, is that the debt was past the legal statute of limitation to collect in my state. Uh, number one, they could not legally collect on it. So that was probably one of the reasons why that debt collector came, the, the, the owner came to court because they were like, hey, we're gonna lose this if this person says something about this. I wanna be there to uh, say that we're gonna dismiss this case. Uh, but I ended up, because I didn't know my rights at that time, I ended up paying the debt uh, $500 to get out of it, which I believe when I look back, I had only charged about $134. Yeah, I was ir irresponsible in my 20s. I wasn't making a lot of money. And uh, actually, uh, actually, let me tell you something. Th this, this just came to my mind. I was in the military when I had that credit card. And... There is something that one of my uh, one of the uh, guys that I'm uh, count uh, that I'm uh, uh, consulting with. He was in the military, and uh, he was talking about when he ETS. That's when you say expired time of service. That all of your debts have to be paid, and at that and that's I don't know if they still do it back now because you know some people may have high debts, but back then they did do it. And so actually, actually, it is possible that that debt was paid when I uh, left service because they would make you pay those debts. That was, and the reason why they do that is because that can make some people stay in the military because they're like, I can't pay off these bills if I have to get out of, uh, if I'm trying to get out. I only had a car and that was paid off. 
And so that debt was probably paid and it was just in inaccurately placed on the portfolio. That's why you want to always make sure that everything you cross all your T's, dot all your I's, make sure that everything is right and accurate when you're being sued. You have a right to challenge all of the information. So I ended up sell settling that debt for $500 and lesson learned, uh, check statute of limitations, check the balances. It could have been paid, anything. You want to always check through all of that stuff. Next thing here is um, you want to make this request. They, they may not always give this to you, but you want to make the request of how much did you pay for the entire portfolio? I've seen cases end up uh, getting dismissed simply because they didn't want to disclose what they purchased the portfolio for because they don't want everybody in the room to look at them and be like, well, you purchased a uh, million dollars worth of debt for a thousand dollars and you're trying to come after this person for the full amount. You know, people, I, 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 people don't feel comfortable, even judges don't feel comfortable putting people under that situation. That's why a lot of debt collectors try to push people to arbitration because then they're going to only be talking about the debt. There's, you're not going to be able to raise these types of questions in there. Next thing, which is what I just talked about, is uh, the statute of limitations. Make sure the statute of limitations hasn't passed and you want to check the uh, statute of limitations for your state. You can go to my website, thecreditrepairshop.com, to make sure that it's not past legal statute of limitations to collect. And uh, you also, it pertaining to federal uh, type uh, communications debt, like cell phones, uh, cable bills, stuff like that, that is under a two-year statute of limitations, and they cannot come after you. That's why you don't have a lot of cell phone companies taking people to court, or cell phone debt buyers taking people to court. Uh, and I have one here where is it? that I just, we just submitted on, I forgot the name, I think it's Convergence. They do a lot of communications type debt. The next thing is you want to request uh, them and any other persons or companies that have viewed your personal data documents that you sign allowing them to be able to view your personal data. You have a right to request that. Also the chain of custody, chain of custody, any of the, who, who had the debt? Did this company have it? That company? I've seen where, I saw one where I did a summons where the chain of custody was so, was so deep. It was like 50 companies that you think that I might be joking about this. 50 different lenders had their hands on that debt. And I made a request for all of that stuff that by doing that, it was like, you're, you're obviously someone in this could potentially not have had information to handle this individual's private information. So you want to get all of that for every company that they have listed. You'll see where like LVNV will have resurgence and then it'll go to another company. You got LVNV funding, you got LVNV, uh, I don't know, capital or LVNV, uh, we want to get your money.com, whatever, you know, all of those, any company that they have listed on their form. They may not show it on their summons, but it'll be in their documents. When they start to give you more documents about how they purchased the debt, you will see all of these different hands that it went through. And you can challenge, uh, number one, contracts with all of them. Number two, privacy, uh, the connection to allow them to view your private information. Uh, the next thing is to make sure that the company has not filed a 1099C. Uh, you can make that request in your summons response. You can state that, you know, and you'll see this a lot on the credit report. That's why it's very important to get your credit reports. If it says debt was canceled by grantor, that means in most cases that they sent that to the IRS for 1099C cancellation of debt. And that would make you not liable to pay the debt because you're going to have it as in as income on your on your uh, uh with the irs they're going to report it as income so they can't double dip and do that and then sell it off to a debt collector and have a debt collector collect from you the irs is going to be collecting uh from you because they're going to put it as additional income so you want to always question that be very careful and question that uh, the next thing is make sure that the original creditor, had, creditor hasn't filed bankruptcy. I saw this with one that I just prepared yesterday 
with uh, Sears. They filed bankruptcy. You want to make sure what did Sears do with their portfolio? Did they sell it off or did they include that in the bankruptcy? That's very important. Think about that. If Sears put it in their filing for bankruptcy, how can they come after you for the debt? How can they come after you for the debt if they put it in their filing? It maybe they didn't, but you want to get documents proven that they didn't. You have proof that they filed bankruptcy. You can pull up any news story on the website, proof that they filed bankruptcy. What did they do with the portfolio? You want the information from the trustee. The trustee has to give you that information. You don't have to go to the trustee for it. They bought the portfolio, so they need to have the records, the uh, assurance from the trustee that they didn't buy a dead portfolio. You could be saving everyone that's in that portfolio because they're they're uh, coming after them illegally. So you never know. You from you taking the steps, from me taking the steps here and challenging that simple point with this one that we did yesterday, challenging that simple point. Did Sears write off, was that all discharged in their bankruptcy? Or did they sell the portfolio before the bankruptcy? We want to know. And this is happening with a lot of these lenders that are out there. A lot of these lenders, a lot of these companies are folding up uh, and they file bankruptcy and you don't know if the trustee sold it off as assets as a portfolio or did they just close out all of the accounts and sold off the assets that they had for the business to pay their debts. You, you just never know. All right, well, hey, thank you for your time. I hope you found that this uh, video was valuable. Uh, it, this is really the way to do it. I know it takes some work. If you need help with your credit, please visit us at thecreditrepairshop.com. Watch the video, What Makes Us Different, so you can see my eight-point validation process, my two-phase settlement process. If you have, uh, it well, if you don't have your credit reports and scores, go to the website, your, the number three scores.com to grab your TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian credit reports and scores. Look on those comment lines where you can see if the debt was canceled by the grantor or original creditor. Next, if you have debt collectors coming after you, you can grab my three pack of letters, statute of limitations letter, debt validation letter, and cease and desist collection activities letter. I do ask for a donation. It helps with my time monetizing, but forget that part. Those three letters can literally save you heartache, headaches, frustration, time, and a lot of money. I think that they're worth it for right now. I still have them for free. I do have a lot of people that grab them and don't choose to make a donation. I just feel that what goes around will come back around for me on that because the person, maybe they're going to use it, get out of, uh, you know, you know, uh, they don't have a debt collector coming after them. And now they might have a couple of dollars that they want to donate uh, to the channel for that. All right. Hey, and if you have debt collectors coming after you, the link is below uh, where we can help you. We can. There's a program that I have where I can show you how to do it. I give you all the documents or you can have us do it for you for third-party debt collectors. Thank you for your time. This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the creditrepairshop.com. Please like this video. Please share this channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to it right now. Hit the notifi notification bell for the next video that's going to be coming out. Thank you for your time.